Welcome to the Polaris Progression Guide. In this video I will show you how from a spawn you will reach endgame in the quickest and most efficient way. If you guys want more videos like these make sure to drop a like, let's aim for 500 likes. Subscribe if you haven't already, each one helps the channel grow a ton. Last video I announced a mythic guild giveaway and this is the winner. To claim your prize, please join my discord and contact me there. Today we're gonna roll another one. To enter this giveaway make sure that you've liked, subscribed and comment something below. If you're a channel member you have a higher chance to win. Also I currently own a couple Polaris servers, if you're interested to play on a vanilla or high times loot servers, IPs and ports will be in the description below and I will see you on the servers. And let's get straight into the video. First things first, you will need to spawn in and get some starting gear. You can forage axes and pickaxes, you can forage metal, wood and wheat. While roaming around the map there are many barrels in random locations, half of them under the ground, which can contain dead zone and high tier loot such as armored plates, sign crystals, bevlar, golden nuggets, gun oil and all types of ammunition. I recommend that each time you pass one, you will always check what they have. To get your first backpack you can always craft it yourself since you don't need that much materials. You only need cloth, which is quite easy to get and rope. Some tips I give to new players is that you can heal yourself with cloth alone, no need to craft it to a rag like the other maps. I recommend to only use cloth when you're bleeding since it stops it, but it can only give 5 HP. You can hotkey melees into your third and so on. So in primary and secondary I recommend to have weapons, that way you can switch from example a sniper to SMG. The first location I recommend to go to is preferably not a military area, since more geared players will be looting there unless you are planning to go straight into PvP and do racks to riches. An area I recommend to go to is Norva, since there is a police spawn which is an unarmed location. From there you can get police clothing, which later on can be upgraded into SWAT clothes, which gives them the most storage alongside the mercenary. You can always get the Nico, which is a really good weapon, since it comes with a 4x scope, has a 500 meter range and gives 43 HP damage to the head, as well as more various other weapons such as shotguns. After you get some items including a weapon and some ammunition for it, make sure to build a small base. You can craft your own axe just by using 2 wood. To make a metal door, all you need is 5 scrap. To upgrade your base from wood to metal, you would need to put your metal scrap into metal sheets. Most items such as scrap walls, doorways and roofs require 6 sheets. Inside your base you can place certain items such as logs, rope, cans, industrial coin, gunpowder and armor plates, including much much more. You can also get yourself a building planner which in this map is the wrench, which can always craft it yourself. And all you need are 2 metal sheets, 2 tape and 2 rope. After you build yourself a small base, head over to Haze. Over at Haze, you will need to farm a ton of biohazard clothes, which are normal zombies drop, or by salvaging Haze clothing. Over there you can get the Nurtle Snake, which is a pretty good SMG, which gives 21 HP damage to the head, has a high fire rate and comes with its own attachments, and this weapon can also be switched to burst. Over there you can find and kill the electric boss zombie, which can be found by climbing up the ladder and going through the area. For this boss zombie you don't require a lot of ammunition, just make sure you take medication with you because he will hit you for sure. You can also go inside without having night vision. These boss zombies can drop military drives, broken gas masks and sentry barrel, which are all very important items. You should keep doing this until you either get a broken gas mask or a biohazard rolls. You would need 6 rolls to progress. Once you do that, aim to craft a horde beacon, which is very easy to do. All you need is a generator, 4 cans, 2 grenades, 2 copper coil and a blowtorch. To get the generator you can kill construction zombies or even craft it and to get copper coil you would need to go to the hospital and it can be found at the scanners. The horde beacon will spawn only a few zombies and these hordes will drop a mechanical lotus. With this lotus you can craft a filter. Once you get the gas mask and enough filters you can go to the dead zone but before you do this I strongly recommend to finish the burnout questline by entering the safe zone which there are various entrances. One of them is going to the polaris sign and very close to it is a windmill. Over there you would need to switch on the power and enter. From this point onwards I recommend to dedicate time in farming items for mechanical lotuses. To craft a lotus you need a military drive, polaris flower, shine crystals and copper coil. To get a military drive you can either kill the boss zombie at haze, you can head over to g6 where there is a crashed plane and get yourself a drive. To get the polaris flower you would need to search the wilderness and can be found on small hills. To get science crystals you need to kill NPCs which are called observers which are surrounded by a circle. If you do enter the circle they will attack you and they can even potentially kill you. Also you can get crystals from opening the random barrels around the map. With fishing you can literally get all of these items. One location to get all of the items for the lotus is over at Saint Dimitar. Over there you can get two coils, a polar flower and kill an observer as well. At the same time aim to finish the Yama questline, which mostly will ask for items such as gas masks and mechanical lotus. Once you finish the Yama questline, you can get the key blueprint, 
which once crafted you head over to the dead zone. Some more tips I can give at this stage is that if you have a chainsaw and a jackhammer you can make it into a drill, you can use your normal grenades for the grenade launcher and you can find yourself free night vision in the safe zone. In the dead zone zombies drop items such as gunpowder, bevlar, gun oil, armor plates and gun parts. In the dead zone with the key you got from the blueprint you can enter in a room wherein there is a boss zombie. Once you kill this boss zombie you get items such as armor plates, gun oil, gunpowder, SWAT clothes, 5.56 ammo crate, 5.56 drums, 7.62 ammo crates, 7.62 drums, mercenary clothes, and bevlar. They also draw various weapons such as Krizzy, Penumbra, and Foster. From there with the armored plates, you can upgrade your base from scap metal to armored metal. You can upgrade your lockers from scrap lockers to display armored lockers and armored lockers. The only difference between these two armored lockers is that one of them, it displays the item you put in first. Also, the HP difference from a scrap locker to an armored locker is almost double. Scrap having 1,500 and armored having 2,700. With Calm Powder, you can craft items such as C4, Explosive Ammunition and Normal Ammunition. With Bevlar, you can craft your police or military clothing into SWAT and Mercenary, which can also give you protection from explosives. With Gun Parts, you can upgrade certain weapons such as from a Kini to a Krizzy, which gives more damage or from a Walnut to a Penumbra. With gun oil you can upgrade attachments and they are extremely helpful. After this you can start raiding bases and reach end game of Polaris. Some raiding tips from this map I can give is that to raid a wooden wall you would need 1c4, to raid a scrap wall you need 2c4 and to raid an armored wall you need 4c4. And that is it guys if you have any questions feel free to ask below if there's something I did not cover. I hope that you guys did enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye!